Okay, related rates part two. So a conic, I think I have three more examples for you. So a conical paper cup, three inches across the top and four inches deep is full of water. The cup springs a leak at the bottom and, lose, and loses water at a constant rate of two cubic inches per minute. How fast is the water level dropping? At the instant, the water is three inches deep. How fast is the cup the radius of the cup changing when the water level is two inches. So this is a twofer. Um, I first see that I have the dimensions of the cup, so three inches and four inches in depth. So it looks something like the radius at the top is three inches and the depth or the depth is four inches. And the cup springs a leak. It loses a water at a constant rate of two, um, two in cubic inches per. So we're going to lose two inches cubed per minute. And since we're losing two inches, where it's going to be a negative. It's minusing the water from the cup. And so what is that a change of when we take out two inches cubed per minute? That is the rate of the volume over time, all right? So what, how fast is the water level changing at the instant the water depth is three? So how fast is the water level dropping? How fast tells me it's a rate. So I know all of this, basically. And I want to know the water level, so that would water level would be the depth, so the D, D, D. Oh, I made it height, so D H D T. Let me call that height of the cup. And um, D H D T when R is equal to. Uh, in the water is three inches deep. When H is equal to three inches. All right, check it out. First off, I see that the three is misleading because the radius, the radius at the top of the cup is equal to 1.5 inches. It's half of three. So be careful. This says inches under there. Move my little face. Okay, 1.5 inches. So is there anything that will compare the radius and the volume of a cone? And guess what? There is. We wrote it down in yesterday's notes. So volume is equal to 1 third pi r squared times h. And I can see a whole bunch of variables here, volume, radius, and height. So I kind of want to get rid of one of them. And I can because I know that the shape on the top of the cone right here, right there, that is a right triangle. So I'm going to take this right triangle. We're going to call it the radius versus the height. And then I have a proportional triangle of 1.5 to 4. So as the height drops, the radius will drop with it proportionally. Okay, so I can set this up as a proportion. R over H is equal to 1.5 over 4. Cross multiply, I get 4R is equal to... Actually, let's just multiply by H. That seems like a lot, a lot easier. So... I get R is equal to um, 1.5 over 4H. And I'm going to multiply this by 2 so that I no longer have a decimal giving me 3 over 8 times H. Okay, so we're going to use this right now to help us out because ultimately what I want to know is what. Actually, let's set this up. So I have D. 
Okay, I have the volume is equal to 1 third pi r squared times h. And what I'm going to want to know is what dh dt is. So if I get rid of r and write my equation in terms of h, that'll be just one less derivative that I have to take. So I'm going to write the volume is equal to 1 third pi times, um, instead of r, I'm going to write my 3 over 8 h, and all of that squared, times h. Simplify. 1 third pi times 9 over 64, and then h squared times h will give me h cubed. All right, keep going here. Volume is equal to um, I could simplify, but I think I'm just going to leave it like that because that just seems easier. Okay, so I want to take the, no, no, just kidding. Okay, let's take out the three. I get the volume is equal to, well, my computer's way behind. Okay, the volume is equal to three pi. Yeah, three pi over 64 h cubed. Look how nice that is. Now we can take the derivative. All right, the derivative of v is dv dt. The derivative of h cubed is 3 pi over 64 is the constant times 3h squared um, times dh dt. And if we look back, I remember that I'm looking for dh dt when the height is 3. So I can go ahead and... And I also know dv dt is negative 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 is equal to 3 pi over 64 times 3 times the height is 3 squared times dh dt. Mm -hmm. All right, when I solve, I get negative 2 is equal to... Let's see, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81 pi over 64 times dh over dt. So I get dh dt is equal to negative 2 times 64 over 81 pi, whew, which is equal to, let's get ourselves a calculator, 2 times 64 over 81 over pi. It is negative 0 0.5030. So when I truncate and when I round, I just get 0 0.503. And then we need some units. This, since we're talking about um, the change in height with respect to time, it's going to be inches per second. Per minute. Per minute. All right, and that is part one. The second part is how fast is the radius of the cup changing when the water level is two inches? So, how fast tells me, I better move my face again. Okay, so how fast tells me that that is a rate. So, we get D, we want. Um, dr, the changing radius, when the water level, so when the depth or the height is equal to 2. Okay. So, the next part we're going to do is... One and the height is equal to two. All right. Okay, since we're solving for dr dt, we need to make sure that we have r in our equation. So I'm going to do the volume is equal to one third pi r squared times h, and I'm this time I'm going to replace h. So one third 
pi r squared times, I'm going to go back and remember that r is equal to 3 over 3h over 8. To, so to solve for h, I'm just going to multiply by 8 over 3r. Okay. So I'm going to go back over here. 8 over 3r is equal to h. Uh-huh. And so then I simplify this to give me 8 over 9 pi r cubed. Okay, and we did that because we want the derivative of r. So we get dv dt is equal to 8 over 9 pi times 3r squared dr dt. Yeah, because that's what we're going to solve for at the end. Okay, now I know that my height is equal to 2, but I got a little issue because I have radius. So how do I solve for the radius? Remember our ratio here, we had like 4 is the height and the radius is 1.5. Now if the height is 2, what is the radius? We can always use a proportion. So 2, the radius over the height right, is equal to 1.5 over 4, and then we'll just replace my known height with a 2. We solve, we get r is equal to 3 over 4 of 0.75, which makes sense. It's half of 1.5, 3 over 4. So now I can substitute in negative 2 for dv dt because we're losing water at a rate of negative 2. 8 over 9 pi times 3, times 3 over 4 squared, dr dt, okay? And then we can simplify, simplify, simplify. I know there's things to simplify, but I'm just going to write this out. 3 times 9 over 16, dr dt. I see the 9s cancel. Those cancel. I get negative 2 is equal to 3 pi over 2 times dr dt, and so I can isolate dr dt whew, to give me negative 2 times the reciprocal, 2 over 3 pi, negative 2 times 2 over 3 pi gives me... Wait a second, I got something different. I forgot something big. I forgot a three here. No, I got that three, nine. No, that's right, okay. So I got four over. Okay, so I get 0 0.424, um, and then our units are inches per minute, and it's negative. So the radius is shrinking at a rate of 0 0.424 inches per minute. Okay. A six-foot man walks at a rate of three feet per second towards a street light with a bulb 20 feet above the ground. When he is 8 feet from the base of the light, at what rate is his shadow moving? And at what point, at the same point, what rate is the length of his shadow changing? So again, two questions in one, my fave. Okay, we're going to add up. I think we're playing, yeah. Okay, we're going to set up our... Uh, situation. So I have 20 feet for the street light, and our guy is six feet, and then I have the what's going to happen is the light is going to beam down, it's going to hit his head and create a shadow right here. So the total length is the shadow. He is eight feet. From the street light, 
Okay, but that changes depending on how if he's walking. So right now he's walking towards the street light. So that eight feet is going to change. So we need to give it a variable. I'm going to give it the variable X. Okay. And my shadow is going to be S. I'm going to give this extra length the um, variable L. Okay. So right now I know that our guy is moving at a rate of negative three feet per second. And he is moving towards the street light. So the length that, he, since he's walking towards the street light, light, the distance of eight feet is going to shrink. So we're gonna use a negative rate. We want um, ds dt when x is equal to eight feet. So we'll go back and revisit that. So when he is eight feet from the base, what is the rate of the, what is the rate the tip of the shadow is moving? So we want to know the rate of the shadow, the shadow, okay? All right, so here we go. I have, I, I have um, X's and S's and all kinds of things. So I can tell from my triangle that I set up that this is another proportion. I have 20, the two heights related to each other are also the ratio of S, the two lengths, so the total of S, the big triangle, over the length of the small triangle, L, which is S, the whole thing, minus X. Okay, I am going to simplify this. 20 times s minus x is equal to 6 s 6 s all right i think we can do better than that 20 s is equal to what did i do wrong nope wrong way okay sorry just had a moment okay so 20 s is equal to 14 X and I see what I did wrong I put a s instead an X instead of an s there yeah that's better okay so I have an equation with X's and S's which is really good because I need these DX and DS um, rates so let's take the derivative I have 20 times 1 DS DT is equal to 14 dx dt. Um, then I want to solve, it says I want ds dt when x is equal to eight feet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and substitute these in. ds dt, I'm gonna divide by 20 to get 20 to the other side is equal to what did I do wrong? All right, so I'm going to subtract six s giving me fourteen s. Wow, I don't know what's going on with my computer is equal to twenty x. Okay, then let's just get s by itself, giving us 20x over 14. Now we can take the derivative. So ds dt is equal to 20 over 14. Uh, the derivative of x is 1 times dx dt. All right, so ds, that's what I'm trying to find, is equal to 20 over 14 times negative three, so ds dt, the, the length of the shadow, is gonna equal negative 60 over 14, which is equal to negative 4.615 feet per second. 
Okay, second part of the equation is, what is the point? I have no idea what's going on with my computer. Okay. What is the length of the shadow at the same point? What rate is the length of the shadow changing? So in this case, we want to know just the length of the shadow. Just the length of the shadow. Okay. So I'm going to set this up as the length is equal to s minus x because I want to use all of those variables. Um, so I want to know dl dt, the length. Okay. So this is a really simple equation. The derivative of l is dl dt. This is a simple equation, but a hard one to come up with on your own. Okay. I know dl dt. Oh, no. I want dl dt. I know the rate that the shadow is changing is negative 30 over 7, which I got from right here. Negative 30 over 7. Minus 3. And I'd plug that into my calculator to get that this is about equal to negative 7.285 feet per second or negative 7.286 feet per second. So this is rounded and this is truncated. Okay. Okay, changing angles. So this time the airplane is going to fly at an altitude of five miles. So it's going to stay at the height of five miles towards the point, like going over the observer. And this, the airplane is going at a speed of 600 miles per hour. We're going to find the rate at which the angle of elevation is changing when the angle is 30 degrees. The angle of elevation is this theta right here. Okay, angle of elevation, theta. Ooh. All right, so we're finding the rate of theta when theta is equal to 30 degrees. We want d theta dt when theta is equal to 30 degrees. We know that the plane is five miles above us. We also know, I'm gonna call this length x. We also know that the, the plane is moving at a rate of negative 600 miles per second. So, and because it's moving horizontally, we're gonna call that um, dx dt is equal to negative 600 miles per second. All right, so we need to have a theta, an x. Hmm, what could we use? I think we should use some trig. I know that this equation tangent theta is equal to the y length over the x length. And that's nice because it has thetas, it has x's, it has y's, okay? So next up, I know we aren't often able to do this, but the y length is five. Does it ever change? Does the height of the airplane ever change? No. So we can actually plug in five here. Okay. So five over x. I have the tangent theta is equal to five x to the negative one. And then let's go ahead and take the derivative. Tangent is secant squared times d theta dt is equal to, let's see, negative 5x to the negative 2 dx dt, okay? Next up is to start substituting. Also, I know secant is 1 over cosine squared theta, so I like cosines better, so I'm going to use that. Okay, here we go. I know that I want to evaluate when theta is equal to 30. So I have 
1 over the cosine squared of 30 degrees times d theta dt is equal to negative 5 over, I'm going to actually write this fraction as 5 over x squared. That just seems easier. Okay. And I am like, wait a second, I think I'm going to need something for x squared because I have too many variables here. And I know that dx dt is equal to negative 600 miles per second. So let's see, how can I figure out what x is? Well, remember a trig? I have a right triangle. I have a 5 for my y. My 30 degrees is my angle. So the hypotenuse, since this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, um, 10 is going to be the length of my hypotenuse, and 5 root 3 will be the length of the horizontal line. Okay, so I can substitute in uh, 5 square root 3 squared for x. And now it's just a bunch of solving. So d theta, which I did wrong a bunch of times before this, negative 5 times negative 600 times the cosine of 30 degrees all over uh, 5 square root 3 and all of that squared. Okay, cosine 30 is, if you look, cosine 30 would be this guy over this guy, which is root 3 over 2. So d theta dt is equal to um, negative 5 times negative 600 times, well, let's put this over, 25. This, uh, root 3 squared is 3, okay, times root 3, ooh, I forgot a squared, over 2 squared. Whew, I made it. Okay, I am honestly just going to type this into my calculator. And what I get is 30 degrees per hour. So the angle, as I move this way at negative 600, um, negative 600 miles per hour, the angle is changing at 30 degrees per hour. So that makes sense because if I'm moving to the left, then I'm going to have to keep looking higher and higher and higher to see the airplane. So the angle is increasing. And that is it.